Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and to another studio vlog. This is actually less of a vlog and more of a like specific targeted video about the new cutting machine that we purchased a couple of weeks ago. It is another Graftech. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. If you watched the previous Graftech um, purchase that I made a couple of well, probably maybe like 18 months ago now it's been a little while but things are a little bit different this time so i'm gonna go over that um we did get it a couple of weeks ago i have waited this time to share it when it's like fully working and we're like absolutely 100 percent happy with it so i haven't got a repeat of last time where i showed you this whole like procurement process and ended up not keeping the machines <laughs> but we did purchase a graftech ce 7000 f mark ii which is the 40 inch graftech plotter with an automatic feeding arm so it will load the sheet via the arm it cuts it and then it feeds it out the back into a tray so it basically just removes the need for a human to be operating it so i can do other tasks while it's cutting as you probably know if you watch the vlogs tom was cutting for me full time for the best part of like the whole of last year um, and then he started to just cut on a sort of as and when basis from about september so i did take my cutting back and it's just been really hard to keep on top of stuff. You probably know that I'm really bad at keeping up with restocks. In the last couple of months, I've skipped releases, whereas normally like I would never skip a release. We're just finding it increasingly harder to keep up with the like level of demand that has been created, which is obviously amazing. And thank you so much for your support but it was basically obvious that the silhouettes were not gonna cut it for too much longer. My confidence was definitely knocked from when I tried the wide format Graftech, so to be honest, like I was really anxious and apprehensive about this purchase, so I did a lot of things differently. I did more research. There's actually quite a few sticker businesses already using the F mark, which made me like have a lot more confidence in it. There's Sarah Murray stickers, Samantha Rose stickers, Fern Creek stickers, Caffeinated Kate, to name a couple. And I have personally spoken to Sarah and Samantha um, with issues or with questions, and they've been really helpful. So I'm very appreciative that people in the community are so open with problems like that to fellow shop owners. So yeah, I did my research more. I contacted a company when I made this purchase. I bought it through a supplier called Signmaster Systems and I spoke with a sales associate who was so helpful. He liaised with Graftech for me and we got samples done. Um, it was a little bit slow. I did first like, open my communication with them. I think it was November and I didn't actually get my Graftech until early February so it did take a little bit of time I think with like Christmas and just general people being off and stuff it was a little bit longer than it would normally be so I did get samples done and to be honest the samples didn't cement my decision it was more like discussing it with other shop owners and I kind of had the confidence then to sort of go ahead I don't regret waiting for samples but the way I set the files up to give them the sample files like isn't how I'm using the machine now so it was a little bit pointless. <laughs> the other thing we did differently this time is the silhouettes are still set up and in use so there's less pressure on the graph tech having to work straight away because it's not like we put the silhouettes away like we did last time although there was a space issue last time so we kind of did need to put things away but last time when it all went wrong I didn't have my silhouettes available <laughs> for me to use them in the meantime whereas now I've got both set up and I think I'm going to continue to use silhouettes for a few things, um, but we'll get into that. So those reasons are why I felt comfortable getting another Graftech. Um, this time we had Graftech come and install the machine for us. They trained us on it a bit. We had like the basics explained to us how to calibrate the machine, how to use the software, how to set files up. And I really think having someone from Graftech come and show us that helped us get straight into using it. We didn't have lots of troubleshooting initially. And like, because we had used the other Graftech before, we kind of knew how the machine works a little bit. Um, but to be honest, we're not really using the knowledge that we needed last time to operate this software. It's completely different software. I haven't really had to do anything with the machine itself. When I had the wide format one, there was a lot of messing with settings on the machine, but haven't really had to do anything with this one, so it's quite different. So I do think if I got this version straight away, my experience with the Graftech would have been a lot different. I actually checked my emails and I first inquired about this specific machine in 2020, and I talked myself out of it and went for the wide format version, and I really wish that I hadn't, because I'm getting on so well with this machine. Like, 
We finally put some time aside to try and work it out on Monday. Today's Thursday for reference. And we started at like 1 p.m. and by 3 p.m. we had cut a sheet like very successfully, like I was happy with that sheet, I would have sold it. So we got it up and running so quickly, Tom did help, so I think it was a bit different having two brains working on it instead of one. And then by four, we were like mass printing and cutting stuff. It was amazing how quickly we found the setup compared to the previous one. But it doesn't matter because we're here now, three years later, I have this machine. <laughs> um, I'm so happy with it. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how it works. So this is the graph tech itself. It's a very big piece of kit. So this is the cutter and it's actually facing away because I guess it's just where it has to go because this has to be on the edge of a table. So this is the tray where the sheets go when they finish cutting and this is where you put the sheets so that they can be fed into the machine with the arm and it uses air and suction on these little suction cups to pick up the sheets. It also has a little camera which is what this thing is so it reads the registration marks with a camera instead of I don't know what the silhouettes use, but it's some kind of optical thing in the blade housing instead of an actual camera. So it does mean that the camera has to be calibrated separately, but it's really not a big deal. It's very simple. And then like before, you have got all the buttons here and the screen, but like I said, I've not really had to do anything. So yeah, this is the whole unit. We did have to replace the desk that was here. This is all my crap because I haven't really been using the silhouettes, I've just been putting stuff here. So we ended up replacing my big long desk that was here with two shorter desks that fit perfectly in this gap. So we can have the graph tech and the silhouette simultaneously, like I said. And this is what the software looks like. Um, you can actually see, so this is the feed from the camera. And if I put my hand in front of it, you can see my fingers, so that's what it's reading. So the software is pretty basic. Um, once you know what you're doing, I actually really like how simple it is. It's quite a lot different to uh, Silhouette. And these are all the sheets that I've cut in the last pretty much two days. I've not really been using it too much the first day and then this is what I did Tuesday and Wednesday. We've got a stack of sheets here that I've just cut and they need to be popped out. I'll be honest, popping the sheets out is the hardest part. So when you've kiss cut your sheets, you do like a perforated cut around the edges and you kind of like pull the sheets out and I'm just not entirely comfortable doing it yet. So <laughs> it makes me feel a bit weird because I worry that I'm gonna rip things, but you're not really going to rip them. It's just how it is. It's just getting used to it, I think, like that. So these are the sheets. Um, this is just a deco page from the mini kit. And what I've been doing is kind of like flicking through and just checking that the cut lines are all aligned. And one thing with the graph deck is every single sheet is identical to the last one it cut. You do have to, every time you send a new design, you have to sort of do a test cut. And then when you're doing your test cut, you can do any like tweaks to the calibration. So occasionally between designs or sheets, I have to like change it slightly by like one or two well, 0.1 or 0.2 mil, like a very tiny adjustment. But then once I've done that, I can send the whole batch through and I know that they're gonna be the same. Like you don't get that kind of um, consistency on the silhouettes I found. And if you remember on the wide format graph tech, I did have an issue with kind of like fluffy edges and I'm not sure if you can see super well, but I don't really have fluffy edges on this paper because this is my normal paper, I haven't had to change anything about the printer or the paper because it works with A4 sheets. So the only thing you get is these little perforation marks, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, um, but I, I don't think it's a big deal. <laughs> because this is like an intro video, I'm trying to not bombard you with information, <laughs> but I have no like cohesive way to categorize this information, I'm just like brain dumping everything that I found out in the last couple of days. The software, like I said, um, is Illustrator. So. I'm not super comfortable with Illustrator. I did have a bit of a go with it when I obviously used the last graph tech. So I know a few things. Um, I'm still using Photoshop. I found a way that I can make like a template. So I only have like a couple of Illustrator cut files for each kit. And then I can just use the same template for every design. So overall I'm having less files per kit, which is great. Um, obviously less to make, less to save, less storage, it's good. As I said, there are gonna be a few files that I'm gonna cut on the silhouette for the time being. Anything with not a straight edge, so my monthly freebies, because they do have like the wibbly wobbly edge. Um, I don't wanna do that on the graph tech. I think that's gonna be a recipe for disaster. Um, my fashion add-ons, I just think like cutting the sheet up is, I can either do it by guillotine, which will be fine, but more labor, 
or um, do less to a sheet because the graph tech can't really cut out lots of little sheets you have to like just do one big outside cut and I don't mind doing that when I'm just like cutting it in half but having to cut the fashion add-on into like five um, I don't want to do it <laughs> I might do it later down the line but I'm not comfortable doing that at the minute so toolbox uh, fashion add-ons, regular fashion add-ons and the 50mm washi I'm all going to do on the silhouette. But they're all really quick to cut on the silhouette anyway, I normally only use like three out of my seven machines when I do runs of those designs anyway. In terms of speed, the Graftec I've been using 20 speed, the silhouettes do 10 as a max speed for reference, so twice as quick. On some of my deco pages I've been using 15 just because... I feel like it's a bit quick to use 20, but I'm sure over time my confidence will rise and I'll feel able to do that. But right now I want to just like stick to going slow and not have any mistakes because I've cut three collections so far this week and I've had a handful of oops and all of the oops have been like my fault, my user error. The machine is just so accurate and I, I've, I've heard this from YouTube videos of other people using them but I didn't truly believe it until I had it in front of me. So this is kind of my first impressions after having the machine for like three days. Um, I won't know anything about like the durability of the machine, anything to do with consumables, the blade, the suction cups, it has little plastic like grabber hand things, like all of those can break or need replacing so I don't really have any kind of experience with how long things will last yet. I'm hoping a decent amount of time <laughs> but because it's matless cutting I'm already saving money on having to replace and buy mats. Let's ignore the fact that I did do a wholesale order of silhouette mats in September um, but I'll get through them at some point maybe. <laughs> I'm just so impressed with how the machine is running I really wanted to show you because I just think it's going to be so life-changing for the business we're going to be able to stay on top of restocks we'll be able to like have more of a life <laughs> we'll get like weekends back I'll be able to keep on top of videos. I mean, I don't know if I'll be able to do all of that, but it will definitely like have me on my way to having a better work-life balance. This morning I came in the office, set it to cut some full boxes, then went in the kitchen, I did a little bit of cleaning, unloaded the dishwasher, fed the dog, like all these things that I can do while it's running. I'm not confident leaving it like alone much yet. Like I'm I'm still in the stage where like it's really like fun to watch it and I'm just in awe, but I went in the other room, did some cleaning. As long as I stay on the ground level of the house, I feel okay leaving it. If I were to go upstairs, I would feel like I'm a bit too far away to like run to it if I heard a jam, but I've not had a jam yet. So fingers crossed it's okay. <laughs> so that is my overview so far. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Um, I'm gonna do like a, I'll, I'll vlog a little bit. Let's just, let's see where the video goes. Um, but yeah, I've talked to you enough. So I'll put some clips of it cutting and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video, whatever it becomes. <laughs> So I hope the audio is okay. I won't really know until um, until I've edited this vlog whether or not I can talk while the graph deck is cutting. Probably not while I'm filming the graph deck, so <laughs> let's come over here. Um, I'm just collating the Spring Brunch weekly kit. I've got all the weekly kits together now, so I'm gonna put them in the cellos. I have been messing around with different sheet sizes to see if I can get two on a page. So there are certain margins on the graph tech, like this is the side that gets fed into the machine and this has to be 25 mil. 
I think this has to be 5 mil and these 15 and that's kind of like the minimum really. So I initially tried two of my full box sheets and they were too long because the sheet would go into the 25 mil margin that's required. So I'm trying just making them shorter because I've obviously got a bit of room to play with at the top with my logo, like it's not really space that's being used, it's just branding. And there's a bit of extra space here. So I thought I would try and make the sheets a bit stumpier. <laughs> I cut them out and it did get a little bit stuck on, I think the bottom uh, right corner for some reason. I don't really know why that is, but I reckon it can be fixed. So I'm having a go at sort of just seeing if I can format my files to work for the shorter size. So compared to a regular sheet, that's the difference. It's not too much and the width is the same. I was nervous about changing the size of anything because of um, albums and cellos like being sized for the old size, but it looks a little bit funny in the cello, but like, I don't know, I, don't, I think if I can get two on a page it's well worth the comically large cello on one end. <laughs> Let's try it in an album. So this is it pushed all the way down and I think it's fine. I think it's more important about the width in the albums. I don't know if you find this, like when sheets are too slim, they kind of like wobble around in the albums and that's the part I don't like. I need to find this sheet now. I've just shoved it in somewhere randomly. There we go. So this is what I've come up with. I mean, I say come up with, it's literally just like a scaled down version of what we had before, but I think it's gonna be fine. So this is kind of the difference. Obviously it's not to scale, but I just had a lot of like extra white space at the top. So it's probably better if anything. So yeah, I'm hoping that this will be the way that we go. Even if we can only do it for the more boxy sheets, I might have to do something different for clip art if it ends up being like a bit fussy. I sent it through a couple of times on the software and it seems fine. So hopefully I can make some kind of template that's compatible with my current design files. Uh, so that I can start using it. But I'll keep you updated on this. The margins were a big concern of mine when I bought this machine. So my sheets are bigger than 5x7, but they're not as big as A5. But I think a lot of shops are doing like one, maybe 7x9 sheet in the middle, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm just conflicted with sheet sizes, to be honest. And then we have kits like the monthly, where there's naturally just a longer sticker on the sheet. Uh, it might be the case that I end up doing this as like an add-on instead, like have it as its own separate tiny sheet and do them on the silhouettes. I'm not sure, I'll keep you posted. I hope the audio is okay, the graph tech is graph teching over in the, uh, well right next to me, I was going to say in the corner, but it's not, it's literally there. Um, I've just printed my scripts so that I can like go through go through the SKUs and the quantities and figure out what needs to be restocked. So I've highlighted anything with a quantity below three as that would be like a priority. Um, converting the files to Illustrator is tedious but not hard, but I did realize that all of the scripts that I designed after I had the ransomware attack, so when I had to remake my template, um, they're not the same <laughs> as my early scripts. The font size is too Point smaller and the offset is different and knowing the inconsistency is really annoying me so I'm gonna redo them all <laughs> so that they are consistent um, the earlier scripts do actually cut more accurately on this on the graph tech cute ones call it a little bit the earlier ones cut better so it does make sense to make the later ones like the earlier ones but it will just take me a little bit longer but it's fine so I'm gonna work through these probably just as they sell out because there's no point reformatting them all in one go, getting burnt out and hating it. So I'm going to focus on scripts first, then I'll do doodles, again with the same process of the ones that are low in stock or out of stock first. I did want to touch on custom scripts because I've had a lot of questions about this in the past and I was hoping that the Graph Tech would let me do them, but this particular model of Graph Tech doesn't have um, barcodes. So what I was imagining doing was being able to assign a barcode to a job and it finding the cut data from the barcode and being able to like automatically cut loads of different jobs based on the barcode instead of me sending each job manually. Um, but yeah, this, this version of the graph tech doesn't have barcodes, which was news to me. I literally asked the guy when he was like installing it and he was like, oh yeah, no, not this one. <laughs> so, um, what I am thinking of is maybe like just having the graph tech will free up some time and I can still just do custom scripts like manually. Um, it may be the case that we get the other graph tech at some point. We are kind of limited with space now, so I don't I don't know basically, but give me a couple of weeks 
like to figure out my new workflow and I'll probably be able to know if we're going to be able to do them or not. But so far it's been such a great experience having the graph tech. Like it feels really dramatic to say that I feel like it's life changing but it kind of is. I'm going to go and work on my reformats for the scripts now, probably watch some Grey's Anatomy. I started it like a couple of maybe a few months ago actually, I'm on season two, just about to start season three. So I'm getting there slowly, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, so no spoilers obviously, because I know season 19 is coming out, so I'm very behind. But I'm gonna go and do these reformats and watch that. So I'm gonna end this vlog here, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing our new machine. I'm sure you'll see more of it in the upcoming vlogs as we get more used out of it, get more comfortable with it. But thank you so much for watching, and let me know if you do have any questions in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!